Welcome everyone to the Up on the Soapbox podcast. This is episode 31. We get older every time. So uh, congratulations to us, right, Dan? Absolutely. Whatever you say. <laughs> I'm Brett Schaefer. I'm one of your co-hosts and a partner in Soapbox. With me today is my other partner, Dan Piggott. Dan, tell us what's going on in your world these days. Well, again, I'm, I always start these things by saying not much, which is just the weakest way to, to start these stupid things. So I really have to come up with something a little more clever other than here's the truth. This weekend, I was watching the grass grow. And I'm not even kidding when I say that. What do, what do I mean by that? Well, I haven't cut my grass yet this year. And I'm, I'm deciding whether it's time to start that thing or do I give it another week? So I literally was watching the grass grow this weekend. How was your weekend? Well, I actually was mowing my grass. So uh, no, I, I spent some time with my son down in college, which was always fun. I pretended to be a frat boy for about a day and a half. That was good times. But we had, since our last podcast, we've had March Madness. You've gone to Florida. Do I need to remind you of all the things you've done? It's been pretty, pretty eventful. It pretty really is. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hard enough time keeping track of my own schedule. What, what am I to do here? Oh, anyway, enough about us. We got a great guest with us, an OG on the soapbox, OG <laughs> distributor. Uh, she is uh, very instrumental in the beginning, and she helped uh, give us some love around the, uh, the social media world, if you will. A friend of ours, uh, welcome to the program, Shannon Laredo. She's the president of Business Branders. See, there's a lot of brander business stuff out there, so I got to make sure I say it right. Business Branders out of the Houston, Texas metro area. You're not right downtown, right? Kind of no, on the outskirts. All right, very good. So uh, welcome to the show. We uh, appreciate you having you here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, about yourself, your promo life, personal life, whatever it is you're comfortable with, the stage is yours. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And um, so I started, are we going, going to go back to where I started? How I, how you I can got go in? back to uh, your first job delivering papers, if that's what Once you want Once upon do. a time, <laughs> a long, long time ago, um, I started in this industry uh, under my mentor, Deborah Foz. She owned a promotional product company called High Profile. And um I had just moved back to Houston from Fort Stewart, Georgia with um, my husband at the time. And I was going to college at U of H. Um, and then I was also working um, as a receptionist at West Houston Infinity, a car dealership. Um, and I was, I would leave there, go over to um, High Profile, which she and her husband uh, owned a building together and he ran a chemical uh, company out of the building. So it was two companies out of there. And my mom worked for the chemical side. And so I would go in there after my job from West Houston Infinity and I would clean their office buildings. Um, over there in the evening. So she'd see me change out of my um, business clothes into like scrubs to clean the office and the toilets and all of that. And um, uh, she asked if, if I needed some extra work in the daytime. And so I did. So I took on a third job and that was working uh, for her doing, back then it was called the call list where we would call the suppliers and see if everything was shipping out on time. Um, so I would do that. So for, gosh, I don't know, maybe six months or so, um, I worked three jobs and was going to school at University of Houston. And then finally, um, I, she liked my work ethic and um, said, what will it take for you to quit those jobs and come work here full time? And um, we made a deal. And then, so, you know, I started working my way up, eventually became the office manager um, and then there was nowhere to go financially from there. I had kind of tapped out. Um, so then made the decision to go into sales and um, went into sales for her. Um, she eventually sold the company to Bluegrass, which is now called Activate, I believe. Um, and then I left there and went to a company called Corporate Images, which was then sold to a company called Fontas which was uh, then sold to Safeguard. Um, and so when that happened, uh, when that final sale happened, I took my assistant at the time, Mary Ann Stein, who is now my business partner, and we launched Business Branders um, 
And so we have been in business with business branders um, since 2016. Wow. Wow. So Jim, it sounds like uh, my path with the mergers and right? acquisitions. My goodness. <laughs> we, now we, if we get bought or sold, I'll be the one doing it. And we'll know. It won't be a surprise. <laughs> Were you still uh, a student when you started with uh, the distributorship or had you already finished your studies at that point? Uh, with Deborah, So I ended up finishing with just my associate's degree um, from the University of Houston. And then by then my sales career had already yeah. taken, you know how that goes. And so, yeah. <laughs> so now just, here I am. Just a typical college girl with three extra jobs. Three plus extra jobs who Under. fell into the promo industry. <laughs> It's great. So um, also, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this uh, before we uh, came on air, as we like to say, uh, but so we're connected, uh, the three of us, in fact, on social media, we see each other's posts. You, um, you do a great job on there, I think. And um, well, I like it because you're, you're, you're very authentic, you're very out there, but you seem to teeter along a line of um, too much. And, and, and the right amount. And you're right there at the right amount, but you're, you're, you're kind of an open book on there. And I just wanted to, I wanted to ask you, A, why you sort of do those, those things out there, uh, whether it's your, your dating life or your, your whatever it may be, um, or, and also how does that fit into to business, right? So, so do, or does it fit into the, in, into the business? Does it lead to business, do you think? Or, you know, just kind of touch on some of that for me. It does. So um, I would say I became active, more active on social media when um, I took the role for HPPA, the Houston Promotional Products Association, as their I did their social media. Um, so I was doing their social media with Josh Hospital for a little while, um, and we were kind of a team there, um, and that gave me my legs, I, I, I think, um, kind of seeing, uh, I was posting for HPPA. And then at that time also, um, in order to get in my groove, um, I started following a lot of the promotional products, influencers in our industry, you know, Brandon and Charity um, and, you know, the like. And Brett. So, and pardon? Brett. And Brett. And yes, <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Only in the Carolinas, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and um, so, yeah, it, it, I, and I went to a lot of the industry classes. Um, you know, Jay uh, leads one. Then I went to his one of his classes um, at the ASI show um, and just kind of learned um, and listened and watched how other people were doing it. Um, I made the decision to, based on some things that even Jay was saying to make my Instagram public, um, a public profile right, rather than private. Um, and there were, there's great value in that. I think from a business perspective, it allows my clients or maybe potential clients to do a little snooping on me. And that is how I toe the line by not sharing too much, um, sharing just enough to where it is genuinely me. Um, so that when someone does meet me, they, and I ask people and people do tell me that I am, how I present myself on social media is how I am in real life. And um, there is a fine line to it with keeping it public you know, because you don't want to put too much out there, but you do want to let people know, you know, who they're dealing with. We do business with people we know, trust, and like, um, and who are like us. And um, so that's, that was the goal there. Um, and I've kept that going with, um, you know, my, me with my divorce and my dating life and just putting a little bit out there you know, but not too much. There's so much fake and phony out there. And I think people can see right through that. Um, so I think it is important, um, especially in business, um, in the day and age that we live in right now of social media to put yourself out there a little bit. 
so that people know who they're dealing with. What what platform? What platform? I was one last question, Brett. What what platform? What platform do you think is most effective for these things, or or do they all have a? You know, they a, all have a, different. Pur- they they have different purposes. Um. So um. For Facebook, uh, personally, um, I tend to be a little. I share a little bit more on Facebook, uh, than Instagram. My Facebook is not public. Um. So those are people who, um, usually know me in real life, um, uh, on Instagram, um, I hold back a little bit more. I see. My only comment was going to be, I I think, I think why you're, you're relatable in so many ways. And I think that comes through because I may not know what it's like to be in the dating pool at this point in my life, but I do have teenagers in my house and I can relate (laughs) to what you're dealing with on the kid level. But so you touch on so many different aspects that most people can relate in some way. So you do a great job about it. And, Thank you. Know, you. I you find know, it I very think, entertaining. Uh, and by the way, I'm a sucker for dad jokes as well. So. <laughs> They're my favorite. <laughs> and, you know, I think for, um, and also, you know, just not only me doing business with my clients, but I think, you know, for me and my relationships with vendors and my peers and things like that, that has helped on social media as well. Just really, you know, when I first started years ago um, with social media, I was, I didn't really understand it. I was nervous about accepting friend requests and and all of that. And now if it's it's an industry, most of my Facebook is industry uh, related. There's a few, you know, high school people on there, but they're almost all industry. and just accepting from requests from them. And then you just, you do just like we were talking about, you learn how they do business and you learn so much more about them. And I just love it. So I want to, I want to pick up on something that you mentioned before you you said that you volunteer with HPPA. Was that, uh, I don't know how many years you have under your belt with volunteering locally or regionally. Um, What did you get out of it? What did, did, was it worthwhile? Can you speak to the virtues of volunteering? Yeah, you know, I would, I highly encourage anyone to do it and everyone to do it um, at some point. I, it took me a long time to say yes to volunteering. Um, I didn't know that I should be the one leading anybody, (laughs) I guess, you know, we're our own worst critic. Um, But I learned so much from from my peers by, by getting involved. Um, it's, it's just been amazing. Um, and I just, I've kind of worked my way up. I've been doing it now with them for, I think five years. I'm currently the president. Um, and it's, it's just been an amazing ride and I just love our people. They are like our family. What, what are the biggest challenges facing the, the regionals right now? Mm, <laughs> getting, getting members um, and also uh, enticing our younger generation to be a part of it. Um, I think, you know, everyone will probably say that same, that same message. Um, we have a couple um, new recruits and I think they're, they're doing great. Um, but yeah, that's definitely the toughest challenge. Yes, I concur. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, we're getting older and, um, you know, our buyers are getting younger too. And uh, it's important. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put you on the spot with this question. Not that, not that we haven't been doing that already, but what, uh, what do you wish every supplier would know about what you deal with every day as a distributor? That it's not us. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not us. It's them. But I think y'all know that. Um, oh gosh, I talk. Every supplier I talk to says that they 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 don't want to be a distributor for what for dealing with the end users. Most people don't want to. Um, it's a challenge, right? especially right now. Our, our biggest challenge, as you know, is stock issues. Um, typically, my job. To, I love what I do, and typically my job is a lot of fun. Um, it's not very fun right now. Um, it just is not. I um, am typically out uh, in front of clients, pitching new ideas. Um, a large part of my job these days is sitting right here, 
and sourcing stock um, to try to try to help Marianne. Um, you know, she's got an influx of just this isn't available, this isn't available. So just um, right now, my job is sourcing stock every single day. So you're a woman that was holding four, you know, full-time school and three jobs. You've now you're now an entrepreneur and opened your own your own business. Um, president of your regional associate. A lot of impressive things. What we haven't touched upon is maybe one of the most most impressive things about you is your commitment to health and fitness, yes. which we all know about from following you on social media. So I just want to give you a chance to kind of touch on that topic a little bit, what it means to you, how you got down that path. And, and then, and really, I want to know, is that, is that a side hustle? Is that a, is that a hobby? Or are we moving towards, is that some place you want to end up? That's an end game goal um, down the line. Whenever I, uh, whenever we sell business branders, um, that will be something I do in the senior citizen community. Um, I think I think it, no, it, <laughs> I know what my age will be at that time, um, and uh, it, it's just so important. Um, it's not pushed um, as much as it should be. You know, the benefits of weightlifting. Um, and just eating healthy. Um, but so and, many people, but everyone's told that, we hear that, you've made this commitment to it. And I just wanted to know what what spurred that on? I mean, were you always like this? Yeah, uh, <laughs> for, no. for, for a very long time, yes. Um, and Mary Ann Stein was my roommate um, uh, back in, in college. And she can tell you that I would wake up every single morning and go run with my Dalmatian. Um, I have lived with pretty extreme anxiety my entire life, um, which also spins into depression if, if it goes too long. Um, how I, for years and years and years, in my younger years, I was on medication um, for that. I made the choice to not be on medication. Um, and so my medication, um, is exercise and, and nutrition. Um, that's how I'm not saying that's for everybody. I know some people need it and you should do that. Um, whatever is best for you. But for me, um, I can keep it in control with, um, diet and exercise. So, um, yeah. And I can tell if I don't go and run or don't go work out, it starts building up, um, in me and you can feel it getting tight and I have to just go um go run it off go run off the crazy as they say but yeah that's why um I, I and I think it's important it, it's important for everybody um I, I think people don't realize how good you can feel if you really start paying attention to your body and listening to it and feeding it what it needs it's a good thing that coping mechanism is what works for you. I mean, it's, yeah. it's nothing, it, it's nothing but healthy. So that that's great. And you found it. That's even better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, yes. before, before we let you go, I need to also ask you um, about the 41 days. And that is the 41 days that Tom Brady retired oh. and, then, <laughs> and then came back. Was that hard for you? Were you exercising more than ever during those 41 days? <laughs> I have so many texts um tim hill was one of the first people that uh, i got a message from me i hadn't seen it yet and i i guess it happened it all came out while i was sleeping and so when i woke up the next day i had all these messages and um yeah i'm glad he's <laughs> i'm glad he's back i didn't know what to do with myself when he retired i was kind of having a little bit of an identity crisis <laughs> yeah what do i do so yeah. you're not, so are you a patriot? Are you obsessed with the Patriots or are you obsessed with Tom Brady? Uh, I, and, and so I had a hard time. I had to have a come to Jesus meeting with myself when, um, when he switched teams. I, I did because I, I went through a period of mourning and not knowing what to do. And, and, and with that, like, do, am I leaving the Patriots? Am I, what am I doing here? And I wouldn't buy his new Jersey for the longest time. I think it went it wasn't until the season started. And then my aunt Sheila, um, 
you know, we're all from Massachusetts originally. I was born in Massachusetts. And so um, she sent me a jersey and I was like, okay, I guess this clenches it. I'm going to, I'm going to put on this Tom Brady jersey and I'm going to cheer for him. Well, so. this is, this, the, the good news is, you know, a lot of people that are conflicted like this, maybe you're born in one area and moved to, it's American conference and national conference. So at sure, least you could say, <laughs> you know, it's my favorite, my favorite in each, on each side. But anyway, okay. I think we've, we've exhausted that. Then. All right. Well, I'll, let's wrap this up then. And Shannon, thanks for being with us today. We really appreciate thanks it. We loved having you part of our soapbox community and we'll continue to love that as well. So we appreciate your candor um, and everything you do for our industry. So keep up the good work and, Thanks for being with us. Thank you all guys. Have a good day.